I will tell you, I was a latchkey kid. And there's something I want to tell you about being a latchkey kid. It was awesome! <laughs> Who thought this up? I mean, they'd let you out of school and the time was your own. You didn't have to hurry home. There was nobody waiting for you. We sauntered on home when we felt like it. We let ourselves right in the front door. We could let ourselves in the front door because we had our own key. Where'd we keep our key, Gen Xers? Little string around our neck. We'd walk into the house and there sitting on the kitchen counter was a list of tasks that had been left by management. And here are the rules. The task must be completed on time. On time just means for management, management being mom and dad, are due home at six o'clock. So they're due home at six o'clock. When do we start doing those tasks? About 5.45. But it's up to me to decide. And Generation X has become our most independent generation. And they join you here at the college and their attitude is, hey, tell me what you want done. Give me the tools and training to do it. And then just get out of my way. my pre-speech personalization process involves asking my client for a handful of industry experts or people who will be in the audience the day of the presentation to interview prior to the program. These interviews take place on the phone, sometimes in person, and I really enjoy these discussions because what these interviews do is help me understand my client's industry and craft some industry-specific examples for the presentation. But the best part is you gain little insights and sort of some insider's knowledge to what's going on with the group. When I spoke for Sheridan College, I learned that everybody's boss worked on the second floor. In fact, somebody called the second floor a very scary place. This teed up my quote with Sunand perfectly. Sunand and I were on the phone, and um, I, I asked Sunand, kind of tell me about what, you, what do you do? What, what, what's your life like there at the college? He says, oh gosh, he goes, I deal with suspension meetings, alcohol violations, you know, reflecting on poor behavior, love triangles. I said, wow. He said, and that's just the second floor. <laughs> oh, that's what you told me not to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> this generation has taken the traditional corporate ladder and crushed it and made a corporate lattice. And it's not about climbing the ladder. And when we say things to millennials like, you need to pay your dues to climb the ladder, that is a disconnect. It's about building your lattice, increasing your connections. Think about a lattice. A lattice has multiple connections. No one connection is more important than the other, but you need them all for a strong structure. The millennials want to talk about the relationship they have with their employer. He said, we got rid of annual reviews. He said, because the young people that are working for me today, the CNAs that are working for me today, do not care about what happened a year ago. They care about, and I loved how he phrased this, they care about the relationship they have with their employer today. And we want to cultivate a conversation with them about us as an employer. First stay interview occurs within the first 60 days of employment, followed by whenever you feel a stay interview is appropriate. You feel someone's becoming discouraged, disillusioned or burned out, you can perform a stay interview. Here's some of the questions on the stay interview. I won't read them all, but I love that second one. When was the last time you thought about leaving your job and what was the cause of you thinking about leaving? He said, we want to have that conversation before it's too late. Millennials, yell out some of the positives about working with the older generations. Let's hear some of the positives. What was it? Fun. Oh, they're fun? <laughs> you guys are fun. Yeah, fun. Right. <laughs> they're more experienced. Yeah, they know the ins and outs, sure. They can figure out how to get five veggies on a plate, no problem, all right? But Janet and I were talking about the way people work and Janet had this to say. She said, the veteran that has been working in the kitchen for 30 years does not work like the person that's been there for five years and she works differently from the person that's been there for less than a year. You have to be open and go with the flow. 
There are times you may want to smack the crap out of someone. <laughs> Those of you sitting at Janet's table might want to be aware of that. I do not want people thinking, I cannot do what Megan suggested because our company's too small or we don't have the budget, too much red tape. Following my presentation, participants will have real life action items they can take to improve their multi-generational relationships both at work and at home. Littleton schools, Littleton Public, Littleton Public schools for two years, you know, Sarah's working away and uh, Sarah, Sarah calls this person over and Sarah says, I think. If we move this, change this, flip this, turn this, it'll be bigger, it'll be brighter, save us money, save us time, the parents will love it, the kids will go crazy for it. What do you think? Wow! Sarah's very excited. Now this person over here, this person over here has been at Littleton Schools for a long time. <laughs> oh no, that won't work. That won't work. Why, why won't this work, says Sarah? Why won't this work? Jeremy just said it. We tried that before. We tried this before, said Sarah. I've been here for two years. I don't ever remember trying this. When did we try this? We tried it before you were born. <laughs> right? As open as Microsoft is to new ideas, and I, I did, I heard that from a lot of you. You know, Microsoft is a place where you can make a mistake, learn from your failure, move on. As open as we are to new ideas, change still can be scary. And when some young person who we feel doesn't have the experience, doesn't have the knowledge that we do, comes along and wants to move it, change it, flip it, turn it, make it bigger, make it brighter, make it faster. Our first instinct is to say what? Be honest. No. No, 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 what we're doing works fine. Okay? But rather than say no, because you know what? Just because it worked before doesn't mean it's going to work this time. <laughs> so here's four questions you can ask yourself. You got a millennial wants to move it, change it, flip it, turn it, make it bigger, make it brighter, make it faster. Rather than saying no right off the bat, Ask yourself, whatever they're suggesting, whatever they want to try, does it negatively impact cost, quality, safety, or service? Does it negatively impact cost, quality, safety, or service? If the answer is no, that's your little red flag to say, all right, let's try something different. Now, I will tell you, I obviously thought twice about using the iPhone joke here, okay? But here is, here, whoops. Boy, he was angry about the iPhone joke, sorry. <laughs> All right, give me another positive, another, yes, flexible. Um, they're still enthusiastic because their dreams haven't been crushed they're, enth <laughs> <laughs> they're enthusiastic because their dreams have yet to be crushed. <laughs> my interest in how multi-generations work differently stemmed from my own frustrating experiences I had following college graduation. Following college graduation, I got a good job with a well-known company. You probably have seen their products in your grocery store. It offered a solid pay package, good benefits, even had a company car. My parents were thrilled to get me off their health insurance. My managers, however, both who came from a different generation, didn't seem to understand what motivated me or how best to communicate. On the flip side, I imagine they were frustrated by my struggles to understand corporate culture or office politics and probably wondered why I just didn't buckle down and conform. I wanted to do a great job. And you know what? I believe my managers wanted me to be successful. But there was a disconnect. I think everyone lives their lives or comes to work wanting to feel appreciated, valued, and connected to what they do. No one shows up hoping they fail. Understanding the multi-generations and the steps we can take to improve our relationships with the multi-generations around us is a win for everyone. As their most important employee benefit, 33% of recent college grads chose training and development over salary. It's this last percentage I find so exciting. 98% felt that working with mentors is important, 98%. So we have a younger generation that values collaboration. We have a younger generation that's looking to build their lattice. They want to talk to you about you as an employer, and they put a high value on mentor-mentee relationships. 60% want to know they're always learning something new at work, and 64% want to feel their work is valued by my leader. 
You say, well, gosh, Megan, I mean, this is a lot to take in. I mean, not only now do I have to help, this, help the younger generation build their lattice and talk to them about the, about the relationship they have with their employer, but now I have to ensure that they, their work is field valued. One monthly 15-minute conversation where you discuss what's something that you're better at now than you were last month, what things would you like to get better at this month, what's your plan for developing these skills, and what resources can I help you with. A monthly 15-minute conversation. Millennials value these conversations because they're collaborative, and the millennials want to know their managers participating in their career development. And as one millennial said to me yesterday, she said to me, I want to know that somebody at, at work cares as much as I do that I'm there. I spoke with Enrique. Where's Enrique? Where, I hear a voice. Oh, up there. Oh, ooh. ooh, Enrique, did you buy the cheap ticket? You're up there. Okay. <laughs> and Enrique, you're, 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 you're going to graduate this year, right? Excellent. Give Enrique a round of applause. <laughs> Enrique said this to me. He said, I think your values should be aligned with the company you work for. I want my work to be meaningful and appreciated. I want to know there is purpose beyond just the task that is helping and impacting people. This may be a lot to ask for. I have a good friend who has a good paying job and he is miserable because he does not feel appreciated. At the end of the day, it is not, it is not the money that matters, but the impact you create. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful school year. Thank you.